Hey guys, how are you guys doing today? We're back with some more Blade and Soul. And this time, uh, I'll be helping you guys gear up your character as quickly as possible in the most efficient way possible. Since the new Awakening patch is coming out very, very soon. It's hitting literally in like two weeks. So I want for all the new players and all the players that are coming back to Blade and Soul to be able to gear up as quickly as possible. So, of course, when you come back to the game, there'll be a bunch of of story missions so these yellow things right here um, these uh, these yellow markers right here highly recommend you finish every single one of them and then go ahead and finish these as well the orange quest is very important because we need to talk about that um, later on in the video and they'll be providing a very powerful type of gear for you guys so the first thing you should do as soon as you finish the story and as soon as you finish or um, getting to as far as you can on these orange quests is to go into a place where I'm located right now which is called Midnight Sky Pedal Plains or MSP. Now MSP is located here in Zyway and if you go um, to Central Garrison which is right here on the mini map uh, excuse me <laughs> on the mini map you'll be able to uh, teleport here and there'll be a location where my arrow is pointing. Okay, so once you uh, get uh, here, you're gonna want to look at one very special thing and you wanna press uh, J or you can click on this little marker. Now if you if your UI has not changed or anything, there should be a little thing here that says daily challenge and this or challenge, um, yeah this, it's, this is daily challenge, but you'll be wanting to complete at least minimum of three out of these, mainly because they give you these boxes. Now these boxes are very important because they give you very valuable materials. These are the most common materials in games, Soul Stone, Moonstone, Sigrid, Orbs, and Elysian uh, Orbs, and they have their crystal forms. And then they'll also give you a daily challenge box. Now this box is absolutely amazing because it gives you two very valuable things. One, solar energy, and number two, um, some of the revival charms and five gold per day which is quite nice and then last but not least you'll get one uh, uh, you know really good reward depending on the day um, and in today's case it has hive queen wings which is really, really nice now the reason why you want to head straight into MSP mainly because um, there is a daily quest here let me show you there is a daily quest here now the daily quest here you need to complete minimum of three per uh, daily challenge in order to receive the quest in order to receive the reward here and so therefore you know uh, MSP or Midnight Capital Plains is one of them um, it'll switch out daily so you want to be hitting dungeons okay after the story there'll be dungeons that you need to play so um, if you get you know easy stuff for example cold storage very easy uh, Naru Sanctum, very easy. Abedric Lair, extremely easy stuff. And then, uh, to know all the dungeons, you can just click here on your, press P on your keyboard, and then you can go to player infographic, and you, and you can see all the dungeons, okay? Now, if you just got out, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna have one of those, you know, epic, you know, raid weapons that I have here in my uh, character. Um, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna have one of those. So you're gonna have one of these very, very small um, you know weaker weapons now um, I'm pretty sure you're all gonna start out as a scale burn weapon uh, unless the next event or the event that we have currently right now depending on you know the time that you watch this uh, there'll be an event where it'll give you maybe a rift walk weapon you know a rift walk weapon or a um, dawn forge weapon depending on which one you pick um, but it doesn't really matter but if it, there's not one, you're gonna start off as a uh, scale burn weapon. Now, the scale burn weapon can be uh, obtained in two different locations. Uh, no, no, there's only one location, uh, which is called. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. It's called Grand Harvest Square. It's right here, guys. You guys go to. Uh, uh, let me see. Silver Frost Mountains, and then you go to Sky Petal Plains. I know you can't see it because there's a bunch of uh, you know teleport areas. Click plus here, and then. Grand Harvest Square and once you're in there there's gonna be an NPC right here that you want to exchange your Naryu coins. Now your Naryu coins can be obtained throughout every single dungeon in the game and they're very very valuable because you can buy your scale burn weapon. As you guys can see 
every single weapon in the game right now has a total of seven, uh, of eight slots in their weapon. So therefore, you want to have all eight slots, and you can keep re-rolling your scale burn weapon until you get eight slots. Okay, just keep going until you get eight slots. Or if you're low on Naryu coins, you can either get seven slots, which is fine. Um, and uh, once you have seven slots or eight slots, you can upgrade. Once you start upgrading, there'll be a chance. Every, every single time you upgrade, there'll be a small chance for you to get a uh, gem, uh, a gem slot on your weapon, which is quite nice. Okay, so you're fresh out of story. You got your eight slot, um, you know, eight slot weapon. Okay, very nice. The next thing is you're gonna want to head uh, into MSP and get better accessories now. The reason why MSP is really really good because you can spam it over and over and over and you can get the majority of your um, accessories slash equipment here at the very very beginning. As you guys can see, there's a bar on top and if you fill up this bar, there will be a boss located right here in the middle of the map, which unfortunately I can't really show you, but this is where you would you know go and kill the boss. Very very easy. Uh, very easy stuff and then once you have enough of these coins here I'm about to show you once you have enough of these coins here right um, you know what how about I purchase some stuff just to show you so I have 2,000 of these things keep in mind that they are there's a lot like you you get a lot of these okay so don't think that like it took me a long time to farm this stuff this stuff is very easy to obtain and um, the drop rate is absolutely phenomenal so Keep that in mind don't think that you know this took me a long time to farm this took me maybe like 10 runs <laughs> easily easily if you do this you know on a consistent base um about no well i shouldn't say 10 runs I, I, this is this is about 30 to 40 runs but um like but the uh, green stones are very very high in drop rate so you know it shouldn't be any problem so once you get enough of these stones right uh, I only recommend you do stages one two and three at the very beginning if you do not have any gear if you just get out the story with the scale burn weapon with the you know hollows um, you know hollows you know these hollows gear with the, uh, the the gear that the story gives you they're not very good so um, come here and do MSP one two three if you see me doing it apply Okay, apply. I do it. I'm, I'm in game. If you're wondering what's my name, you know my name is right here. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm right here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you see me in the faction chat, then you know of course apply on me, and you know I, I can easily carry. Okay, so once you have enough of these stones, you're gonna want to talk to one of these merchants here. Now there's three locations. You have one right here, which is the closest. Uh, this one here, and there's one more here, and there's one more here, of course. Okay, and then you're gonna want to talk to this guy. Now, don't worry about these uh, golden seed currency because they're outdated. Uh, you can no longer obtain these things. So um, yeah, <laughs> okay. What you want to do is you want to scroll down, and once you have enough of these uh, uh, stones, you're gonna want to buy the first thing. The very very first thing is get your destiny ring, your immortality earring, your oath necklace, your belt, um, and your bracelet. Okay. Now these things are really cheap, and I didn't really list them in order. I didn't list them in order. So the order is to get your oath necklace, your earring, your ring, and then later on when you get the yellow crystals. The yellow crystals for are for doing stage four and five. So once you get stronger, okay. Once you get these things. Um, highly recommend you look for a stage 4 and stage 5 party so then you can start to get the uh, Divine Beast bracelet or if you can't get into a, a stage 4 or stage 5 you can go into a special dungeon called Naryu Sanctum. Now you only have to do Naryu Sanctum 10 times in order to uh, you know get these things or, or, or get the achievement to be able to unlock it. Now. The the, uh, the way that you would get it from that dungeon is either from a drop, or you get from Dragon Cores. Where are they? I have 910 Dragon Cores mainly because I don't use them, and Dragon Cores are used to buy legendary accessories from a specific merchant located. Um, uh, there's one in Mushin's Tower. It's uh, not 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 there. <laughs> there's one in Mushin's Tower somewhere located here, and you can buy it with about 200. Um, 200 dragon cores. Now the dragon cores, they have a really good drop rate. If you are, if you have a good consistent drop rate, you can get around 20 to 40 per run. 
so or you know 20 yeah 20 per run if you're not lucky you'll have to do it maybe like you know 20 25 times the dungeon is relatively fast so you don't have to worry about that but if you're able to do MSP I highly recommend MSP because MSP is one spammable it's quicker and uh, it's just the fastest way possible for you guys to be able to get these accessories now there's one more thing okay there's one more thing after you get these accessories here is that you do not level up okay you do not level up these things because as you guys can see i have a better belt this is called the skybreaker belt this is the tier 2 belt for the as um in terms of legendary as of this uh date here and don't level up the um uh belt here that you get don't level it okay because you'll just be you wasting uh your very very precious materials that you need to upgrade something else which we'll talk about and same thing for the uh bracelet now the bracelet um i can show you guys here is the either uh dragon or tiger bracelet it doesn't matter which one you get um, well it does matter because one will go with your uh whichever element for example, the uh, dragon one here is for lightning build, and tiger is for ice build. So make sure you pick the right one. But I highly recommend you do not level it because, again, they are very expensive to upgrade. Well, I shouldn't say very expensive because these things are relatively cheap. Let's be honest here. They're relatively cheap, but why would you spend materials right here, right? When you can be putting your materials somewhere else and uh, be upgrading your uh your stuff right so since you're collecting materials and if you when you do msp you'll get boxes from the boss and they'll contain these uh materials that you guys hear so soulstone crystals moonstone uh sacred and elysium these things are very valuable and i highly highly recommend you guys put those va value uh valuable uh the game froze there for a second uh valuable uh materials to good use and put it on your weapon now your weapon is gonna be the thing that's gonna make you the most strongest at the very beginning of the game because your weapon will uh will cause your character to do the most uh the most damage and as you guys can see they do cost a lot of material so if you were to let's say you know spend some of the materials upgrading the bracelet slash the belt they cost the exact same amount um you'll be wasting you know you'll be spending you know 500 some crystals here 100 some here 300 some here 90 some here but you know you could have been using it on your weapon which your weapon is way 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 more important at this specific stage okay so get your weapon up to a uh, uh, seraph or baleful 12 as quickly as possible and then you want to break through straight to raven now the reason why i say straight to raven is that riftwalk and dawnforge weapon there that's what they're called switched around dawnforge here riftwalk here um is that they they're not worth it anymore Unless, unless you're one of those players that are really trying to mid-max, um, I'd say just go straight for Raven because Raven material is very easy to get. And so here, you can look at the market by pressing F5, Sealed Raven, okay? Now, these um, Sealed Raven King's Energy, Sealed Raven King's Animus, and Sealed Raven King's Veros uh, Ferocity is the weapon material you'll need in order to upgrade to a raven um, weapon okay so keep that in mind they are extremely cheap <laughs> look at that two gold for the um, you know ferocity um, you know one not not even two gold for the aminus and not even a in, in like super cheap like, again super super cheap to upgrade to here and once you get to here uh, for example let me see from Seraph 12 actually no no I wouldn't say go to Seraph 12 I'd say go to 10. <laughs> I, I'd say go from Scaleburn. Um, let me see. Scaleburn all the way to Seraph 10. Okay, Seraph 10, and then you know, go here, and then you want to upgrade from here to here. And then look at that, super cheap. And you'll need one of these Empyrean stones. These Empyrean stones they usually go for, for around 160 gold. However, if you join a guild called Forge Keeper, is that right? I think that's called Forge Keeper. Forge Keeper will allow you to craft. Yes, they'll allow you to craft Empyrean Spirit Stones, and they are somewhat expensive to craft, but it is way cheaper than what the uh, the uh, you know 
the marketplace is uh, you know making you pay so it is a cheaper process so highly recommend if you as soon as you get to here right you go straight to Raven and then you keep upgrading to Raven 3 now once you get to Raven 3 I'm gonna say stop real quick stop real quick and since you, you're at Raven 3 you get as you as you can see you guys get amazing buffs here you know depending on what class you play of course and then you're gonna want to go back here you're gonna you want to keep farming you want to keep farming the green little crystals because these green valiant night stones they allow you to buy raven soul shields now raven soul shields are really good especially at the beginning they are the third most important item in the game your soul shields are extremely powerful compared to your um to what kind of gear you get so as, as soon as you, you get to Raven 3 and you get, you know, the accessories like the, uh, you get this, you know, get all the, the, these items. Do not upgrade the bell, do not upgrade the bracelet. Go and go ham on the soul shield because the soul shields will make you extremely powerful, okay? Especially at early gear. At early gear, your soul shields mean every single thing to your character. It gives you health, it gives you the most instat important stat in game, which is critical. They give you a, a set bonus. Um, as you can see here, this is you know this is a really end game uh, soul shield. But you know what? How about I buy some of these things? Then? You know, I'll tell you. How about I'll buy I'll buy the first piece here, so then I can show you guys the idea. So uh, when you get one of these, you open it right, and then you're gonna unseal it with your unsealing charm, and then you're gonna look at the stat. Now, the reason why I say soul shields mean every single thing to you is that you'll get a set effect. Now you want all eight the AP set effect because not only you get the set effect from you know having three pieces and five pieces you also get the eight set effect which is very powerful especially well for me for warden uh, you get you know sword salvo which is very powerful soul flare decreased by 30 percent which is huge because that's soul burn soul burn is absolutely amazing and so your soul shields mean absolutely everything to you you also get your most important stat which is critical you also get some uh, crit damage you also get some attack power as you guys can see from the uh five step bonus there um you also get some damage on decimate which is your the uh, grappling skill which by this point if you get the eight the eight set um you do not need to use the grappling skill the grappling skill is only used when a bd or destroyer um, grabs grab their opponent and they are able to uh, put them on restraint and there's a skill that procs it. I don't recommend using that skill because it's not really strong by the time you get 8 set for Black Tower. Okay, so now that you have, you know, farmed for all 8 pieces of your Black Tower uh, Soul Shields, they are very powerful and keep in mind they give you very good amount of crits. How about I show you? I'm just gonna keep like, how about we, how about we buy, buy 2 more and hopefully we get crit. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we get crit. Okay, so uh, we got crit and accuracy. There you go, crit and accuracy. Very good stat. So what you can do is that when you have this, right, you see all the stats here. You can even improve it by, you know, sacrificing the same social piece, which is really nice. And of course, you want to max those out as quickly as possible. Now, there is a second way to do this. The second way to do this is to go to Celestial Basin. Celestial Basin is located here in Gun One City, and you can like on the map here, right? Gun One City, click here, and then you can hit Rinse Dry to Celestial Basin. Celestial Basin will have a merchant located here, and you can farm a special currency called Peaches. Now the Peaches here is very RNG based. Now the reason why I say farm MSP over, um, you know farm MSP over um, Celestial Basin is because Celestial Basin is very RNG and uh, the amount of peaches you get per completion is randomized right and so that's the re main reason why um, I say do MSP because MSP is very consistent it's a very consistent and quick way for you to gear up okay so once you have all your accessories okay you, you have been a great player you, you got your you know your accessories here you got your belt you got your bracelet you got your soul shields now you're like okay I'm set where do I get a stronger earring and where do I get a stronger ring okay so how do you get that well remember that the orange quest that I talked about the orange quest is gonna allow you to go to a raid called Sp sky brick spire which is located here in condo vr the only way that you'll get to this area is by doing 
the first Orange Quest, which is the Raven King. Um, it's about Lu Sung and everything, right? I, I don't remember what the uh, specific name, but Kanda VR is the place to be at once you get all this gear from uh, MSP, and then you can go to a, a specific raid called Skybrick Spire. As you guys can see, Skybrick Spire has Raven Social. The reason why I say that you should farm MSP for your um, Social is because if you don't already have uh, the Socials from here, you're probably gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably gonna die because things here they hit quite hard, especially for a low gear player, and um, they'll they'll absolutely destroy you if you do not know the mechanics. However, Skybreak Spire is a very easy raid, and you can uh, pass it really really quickly and really really fast. Okay, if you see me recruiting, like I'll say, you know, Skybreak Spire run. Um, usually, I don't charge anybody to run, you know, do a run with me mainly because I'm not that type of player. You know, if I can help out someone that's you know that's new, then fantastic. Okay, so as you guys can see here on the loot table, the loot table has a uh, has a couple of accessories. You guys can see here, dragon dragon song ring, igniter ring, tremor ring, igneous earring, uh, seismic earring. Permafrost earring. So those Skyrim Spire is gonna be the location for you to get your elemental accessories. The main reason why you want to get rid of your immortality ring and uh, destiny immortality earring and your destiny ring is because Black Tower accessories are s wrong one. <laughs> Black Tower accessories are very powerful. The, you're gonna stick with these things for a very long time. What I mean by a very long time, they're gonna be with you for the majority of your gearing session, okay? For the time that you put into the game, they're, they're gonna be chilling with you, they're gonna be with you to, you know, help your DPS. So that's why I'd say, don't, again, don't waste materials upgrading, you know, the belt, the crappy belt, the tier 1 crappy belt, and the crappy tier, tier 1, um, uh, bracelet because they're not worth it, right? So instead, you know, you put your material towards the weapon. Once you get to Raven Three, go ahead and go to uh, Black Tower or Skybreak Spire and get the um, the ring and the earring from here. Now, of course, it's RNG. Now, it's very easy for the next Awakening patch because the next Awakening patch is or the the upcoming Awakening patch. You can you can switch accessories very easily, right? So for example, if you are a KFM and you're a fire build and you got a wind, let me go to KFM here. For example, if you got a, uh, a wind ring and you're like, oh man, I play fire. It's okay though. You can switch them, which is really good. It's okay though. Yeah, you can switch them, which is really good. And this allows you to switch between elements very quickly and very easily um, as well. So get your black tower um, accessories through the uh, the merchant, uh, not not the merchant, from the raid there, and uh, you need 12 players. Now, it's a raid. It's a very easy raid, so don't worry about being it. You know, being difficult. Just if you join mine specifically, I play on the Zulia server. If you join mine specifically, be like, hey man, this is my first time doing this, and you know, I can all expect you to die, and you know, I won't get mad at you because. Um, you know, there's like if you're if I see that you're somewhat decently geared and you die in Black Tower, you know, it's you know, <laughs> I, I just have a couple questions, you know, what I mean, but as soon as you uh, get these uh, accessories here, you're set to go and you want to max them out as quickly as possible. Now, how many how many materials are you gonna need for this? So, for example, here, how about we go to stage 10? Don't awaken them until you have more than enough. Um, materials for everything else okay so a bt accessory it's gonna cost you three premium stones now premium stones you can buy it from the market okay or you can transmute it so let me see you can transmute these things here right here there you go you can transmute it by using soul stone crystals moonstone sacred orbs elysian orbs and it'll cost you 15 gold now of course there's a chance to fail wow there's a chance to fail of course but um i would say if you're confident in your luck and you believe and you believe in the power of RNG Jesus, he will grant you a premium stone. I guarantee he will. Okay, so don't worry uh, about that, and you'll be able to get this very easily. Of course, the mate uh, the uh, the uh, common materials, you know, 700 some soul stones, 180 some uh, moonstones, 
you know, Stray Crystals and Elysian Crystals. Of course, you're gonna need these, okay? So, if you were saving materials from these two here, like, saving materials from these two alone will be able to get your weapon to Raven 3, get your, you know, earring, at least one BT accessories to max. Like, you know, because that's how, that's exactly how I did it. If you guys are wondering um, what character I'm playing on, I'm playing on my Warden, and my Warden is the second class that I have leveled up from level 1 all the way to this gear by myself with no help except in the beginning because I got some really good friends and they were able to help me at the beginning and I was able to skip some stuff but other than that I did it the exact same way that I'm telling you guys right now the um, the way that you want to do it here and then you want to do the same thing for the uh, the earring which they cost exactly the same amount of materials except the breakthrough material instead of a uh, oblivion ring it's a oblivion earring same thing for lucent ring it'll be a lucent earring okay now there's gonna be one more thing that the accessories do not tell you is that the accessories hold on let me um get a upper get a closer look at them is that they'll use this thing called legendary jewels a legendary jewels they could be expensive they could be really expensive okay and so how do you get legendary jewels <laughs> okay let's talk about that right now you get legendary jewels by pressing the Dragon Express and you can buy legendary jewels for 20 gold which I don't feel like it's worth it well sometimes it is depending on uh, how how much gold you make per day uh, if you do if you're at uh, Raven 3 and you have been following what I'm telling you you should be able to do all the dungeons from uh, let me see let me see let me see uh, do not do any of these bottom dungeons here they're absolutely a waste of time if you do all the dungeons from uh, Naryu Sanctum, right here, right here, where's not? I can't find it guys, I'm blind, somebody help me, I'm blind, okay, there we go, uh, Naryu Sanctum, at, a, at Raven 3, you can go all the way up to uh, Starstone Mines, very easy stuff, and uh, doing, <clears throat> when you do Naryu Sanctum, Iron Tech Forge, Eventric Lair, um, Starstone Mines. You can also do the lower ones, which is Foundry. You can just hit LFP and the F8. Click on F8. You can join these uh, lobbies, and they'll have players in them. Um, Harry Foundry, Desolate Tomb, Evendrick Citadel. They're very, very easy stuff. So if you're low on gear, you can just hit LFP on these dungeons. If not, do Naryu Sanctum and uh, Naryu Sanctum, Arntek, Evendrick Lair. Um, let me see, Starstone Mines, and if you're if you're a little bit more comfortable with playing your character, you can even hit Hollow's Heart. Like Hollow's Heart has been nerfed so much to the point where um, it's very very doable. Okay, so uh, to get legendary jewels, you either have to spend 20 gold, or let me see, spend some materials to get it, or there's one more path that the game doesn't tell you. Okay, and this path is you go to Moonwater Plains, you go to um, uh, Black Ram East Fleet, click on this right here, and then you're, you're gonna want to go to Black Ram East Fleet, and you're gonna want to go to Bloodshade Harbor. Now Bloodshade Harbor is a very, oh, is it Bloodshade Harbor? No, no, it's called Nightshade Harbor. There's, there will be a place here, right here, uh, da, 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 Nightshade Harbor, there it is, I'm blind. There'll be a place here called Nightshade Harbor. Now, Nightshade Harbor will have a specific item you want to look for. And that specific item is called a Pirate Bracelet. I'll link that video right now in the screen so you guys can go watch it. But that is another way that you can get Legendary Jewels. I can't explain it because the video is already long enough. And so, you know, I'm not going to go too far into it. But these are some of the ways you can get Legendary Jewels. To level up a Black Tower accessory, to level it up from 1 to max, okay? So from 1 to max, not only you'll need these materials, you'll need about 110 Legendary Jewels to 120 Legendary Jewels. The reason why I say it's a ratio is because it's RNG. When you upgrade a material from here, there's a chance of getting a, a successful and a non-successful fusion. Okay. Now, if you get a super, if you get a very successful, it'll boost the bar up a lot quicker. And um, here, how, how about I show you? 
How about I show you? Uh, let me see. Do I have any accessories that I haven't opened? You know what? Since we have so many green stones, how about we, uh, you know? How about we, uh, buy one of these things? How about we buy the belt? I'll just probably discard it after. But, um, so you guys see these bar, right? This bar here will fill up when you have jewels. Let me see. Do I have jewels on me? Jewels. No, I don't have. I do not have jewels on me. Okay, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But if when the first few stages, it's very cheap. It takes about 15. The second, the uh, breakthrough from uh, stage four to six, because we will here you up to stage four. Stage four through stage six will cost you around 30 to 25, and last from stage seven to stage nine will cost you a whopping 60 to 66 jewels. Okay, so that adds up to about 110 to 120 jewels to max out one of these uh, accessories. So keep that in mind. And if you're buying, okay, if you're buying these things, holy crap, uh, it'll cost you. It'll cost you, let me see, about 2,000 gold. <laughs> now, 2,000 gold may not sound like, may sound like it's a lot, but I have 2,000 gold right now, and I make. Like I make quite a bit of gold every day, but that's mainly because I'm, you know, I'm pretty feared. So, um, use your, spend your gold very wisely, um, and upgrade your accessories three stages at a time. The best way to do it is just to do stage from stage one to stage six, okay, and then from stage six you jump all the way to stage ten. This way you'll mitigate some of the material costs, and you'll be mitigating some of the, you know, gold spending on the jewels as well. So make sure you um, use your gold very wisely and so that's uh, that's the first part now once you have once you have your very powerful elemental accessories you've got your stage one uh, bracelet you got your stage one belt next thing is well you keep well if you I'm pretty sure you would still have some leftover right because there's one more thing in MSP that you want to get that is your mystic soul badge your mystic soul badge and your revelation uh your, yeah your mystic soul badge they're called enigma and, Re and revelation they are your tier one mystic soul badge for your class now each you know each mystic soul badge does something different for every single class and i highly recommend if you do not know how to play your class at this point go and search up on youtube or ask your friends if they're if you're playing with your friends um, you know, go look up how to play your class because this becomes extremely important um, if you're, you know, starting out because you want to, you know, play your class at the best and optimum level as everybody else expects you to in the game. Okay, so make be sure to pick up one of these. They're fairly cheap. They're like around 400, you know, stones, so not too hard. And that is the last and final thing you'll get from MSP. All right, last and final thing. <laughs> That's it from MSP. All these other items there, you're not gonna need them um, until later on. But I would never recommend you guys farm MSP for any of these soul shields. Same thing for any of these soul shields, and same thing for all these soul shields here as well. So the the mystic badges, if you, if you're you know just getting to the game, it's the last and final thing. While Every single day, remember to do your daily challenge because your daily challenge again gives you a very strong currency, which is solar energy. And now, and let's get into solar energy. Solar energy allows you to buy specific items uh, like these. Now, the reason why I say solar energy is very, very good is because you're able to buy your soul badge. Now, soul badge and mystic badge they go hand in hand, and you want to have both of them because they are a DPS increase. Yes, they make you hit harder with no additional stat. As you can see here, I have the, uh, you know, I have a soul badge and I have a mystic badge. They go hand in hand. They give your character a significantly different type of play style as soon as you get them. And they give you a very strong buff, depending on your class, of course. Every single class has their own um, soul badge that you need to get. And again, go watch how you play your own class because I I can't really you know answer all the questions of course I'll try to answer some of them if uh, they do arise here but solar energy allows you to buy the soul badge now the soul badge you'll be like man that's 125 and I only get let's say four per day so if I only get four per day 
how much would I need? How many days is it until I get um until I get enough for a soul badge? And that would be approximately one month. And you're like, what? That's way too long. And I'm like, it's okay. There's a second way. <laughs> second way is you go to Mushin's Hall. Now, Mushin's Hall, you're gonna have to accept a quest from this place right here, which is Infinite Challenge. Now, there'll be a quest on your J because once you finish your um, once you finish your uh, story, there'll be a uh, huge list amount of quests that you want to get done, and I highly recommend you get done because it gets cluttered very 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 fast okay so make sure you click one for tower of you know in the infinite challenge and click here you'll be able to enter a place called tower of infinity i already have videos talking about tower of, of infinity so go check those out on the channel they're on screen right now <laughs> okay so that is the second way that you can um that you can um get your soul badge and tower infinity is a lot faster than you know playing the game for 30 days and hopefully you can get the uh, soul badge and that concludes the first part of gearing at uh that could <laughs> i can't even do the outro right i've been talking for so long and that concludes the first part of um gearing for your character at the very beginning so um, once you have all those gear, uh, you know, Soul Badge, Mystic Badge, Raven Soul Shields, you want to start to go up from uh, from Raven 3 all the way to Raven 6. And so get your weapon, you know, focus on your weapon. Once again, once you're at Raven 6, you can start to do a dungeon called uh, Hollow's Heart, uh, Drowning Deeps, and um, not Ransack Treasury. I'm pretty sure you can't do that yet. Yeah, not not Ransack tre Treasury, but you should be starting to do Hollow's Heart. Like you should be doing Hollow's Heart and Drowning Deeps. Drowning Deeps is the place where you get your second tier belt, and that's the belt you want to upgrade. But I think we'll have that part for the part two uh, of this video. So once you have once you have all that gear that I just talked about, upgrade your weapon to Raven Six, and then you can do all the dungeons from uh, you know any of these places but i wouldn't recommend you do any of the uh lower ones especially ec desolate tomb naryu foundry you know like none of that stuff so naryu sanctum and up you'll be able to do that there's a few solo dungeons that i highly recommend you start doing as well the solo dungeons are outlaw island which is located here there'll be a quest that you need to take there'll be a um solo dungeon here which is called uh yunsang we call it yunsang but you know, you'll have a quest for that as well. And there's also one more location which is located up here. Yeah, located up here, which is called Naxan. So make sure you check out all those solo dungeons. I'm pretty sure at Raven 6 you can't do Outlaw Island yet. So at Raven 6 you should be able to do Yunsang. And at Raven 6 you should be able to do Naxan. So make sure you hit those two solo dungeons and uh, complete those uh, as you go throughout your daily runs. And that's it for Blade and Soul. You do Black Tower weekly. You do, um, you do Black Tower Weekly, you do your da daily dungeons, and of course you want to hit these weeklies as well. Dawn of Connor VR, Fallen Around Sioux School, Snow Jade, and uh, I wouldn't recommend you guys hit these things just yet because one, they can be really hard. However, you can do them at Raven 6, so it is recommended that it, you, can, you try to get a group. If you're wondering where they are, they are located right, uh, right here. Here, if I can zoom in, there we go. They are located right here. Fallen Rasu School, um, that's Temple of Alluvium, Fort, uh, Snow Jade Fortress. And uh, if you did the um, Skybreak Spire quest, there'll be Con Dawn of Kana VR right here. And the uh, two temples are located in Emperor's Tomb right here. All right, guys, so that concludes the first part of gearing from nothing to everything. I think that's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> Nothing to everything. Alright guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have learned something about gearing. Like I said, I've done this on my Warden from nothing to, to all the gear I have now. And so on the second part, we'll be discussing from Raven 6 gear all the way up to Aransu 9. I hope you guys are excited as much as I am. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching today's video and I'll see you guys then.